Now let's talk about how to install the SWA Child Plot Manager onto your Ubuntu operating system. So previously, we probably went through how to install uh, the Chia blockchain onto your Ubuntu OS. So let's talk about the SWA Child Plot Manager. Basically, this is a plot scheduler. It helps to stagger and schedule your plotting at a different kind of like a different duration and space out from each other. And it also helps you to manage the resources that you put into each plot, uh, like a job manager per se. Okay. So previously I already have a like a guide in, on Windows 10. So now I'm making this guide for Ubuntu. Uh, okay. So basically, okay. From this, so this is a pre-recorded video again, and from this video I'm showing how to like find the Swatch Up Manager, how to install it from GitHub. So if you are at GitHub, for example, here I'm at the GitHub page for the Char blockchain. Then actually you need to click on the github the cat logo at the top left hand corner to go to github's main page then under this github search box here on the top right you can just type swa cha plot and you can just enter the, the first result should be it swa cha plot manager by swa so swa is the name of the creator who made this okay so you can either download the code or personally i prefer to go to the latest release so if you are coming from one of the, my previous videos, my previous video was uh, on how to install Swatcha Plot Manager for the previous version, uh, version maybe 0 0.01 or something for Windows 10. So take note that Swatcha himself has actually upgraded the version. So within the last seven days when I recorded this video, it was already version 0 0.1.0, which has some improvements and i let's see whether we have enough time to go over it but basically okay if you like to install it for linux just need to in, download the source code so i just use the tar.gz because that's what i think most linux users download for which is i'm going to save the file so other than saving the file here obviously you can use the git clone command as well but i'm going to just download it to my downloads folder so your downloaded codes are always in your uh ubuntu home folder home nav from the home folder you navigate to the downloads folder and you will see that we've downloaded the code here in zip format so i'm gonna double click to open it and i'm gonna extract the files just like any other zip manager just extract to the same folder yep says the files are in downloads and you can see that it's been extracted in the same downloads folder okay the files are all there okay so there's a readme inside so readme.md you can open it with your uh, text editor app on ubuntu which is the same as the notepad app on windows 10 but uh, basically the contents are the same as from the swacha plot manager website so i'm gonna close this because we're gonna use the website for our uh, installation instructions so the readme is the exact same as what we see here on this website here. And we're going to scroll down to look for, okay, so these are the commands you use. We're going to look for how to install. So that's it, installation section on the GitHub website. And like I mentioned, the good thing about uh, Ubuntu and Linux is that it comes pre-installed with Python 3.8, uh, especially for this Ubuntu 20.04 version. So we can download, as it says here, we can download the, co the code or we can use git clone with the web address for uh, the link for downloading the code in order to get it into our Linux system. Especially if you are using Linux desktop, you have to use the git clone command. Then we're going to open terminal in our case. All right. Open terminal, we're going to change directory into the Swarcha plot manager folder. So one way you can open the terminal is uh, let's go into the Swatcha Plot Manager folder. So we go into downloads, go into the folder for our Swatcha Plot Manager, the one that's already been unzipped and extracted. And we're going to just right click on the empty space and go to open in terminal. So this will instantly skip the change directory command because it instantly opens the terminal and it is in the, already in the same directory as your plot manager. Okay, 
So I'm probably going to reposition the windows to make it easier to see. And we're going to move forward into creating the virtual environment. Okay, so there's a GUI. So I'm going to exit my terminal window for this, the char GUI. Yep, so we have really changed the directory. So now we need to create a virtual environment. So just run the following codes, Python space dash M space Ven V space Ven V. Okay, so in this case, we're by for this version, this build of Ubuntu 20.04, seems like Python doesn't work. The alternative is can, rather than Python, you should use Python 3. So I'm probably going to try again with Python 3. Okay. So you see an empty space there. If there's no error message, it means that it actually has worked. And we need to activate. So I've created the virtual environment. Now we need to activate it. So for Linux, you see the following codes, which is dot space dot slash venv slash bin slash activate. Or you can use source space dot slash venv slash bin slash activate. So either one of the codes will work. So we use the first one and we press enter. So you see that uh, I highlighted the bracket venv here. It means that we are now in the virtual environment and we can proceed. So yep, so I'm just showing here that we can use the other set of instructions, which is the source instructions. And next one, we're going to run the pip install dash r requirements dot txt so just copy that paste it in okay so we're successfully installed yep you can see the here the message says successfully installed and we're going to move on to configure our uh, config file okay so the config file is located in the same folder as your plot manager. So in this case would be download, in my case would be downloads, swatchar plot manager. And I'm going to make a co copy of the config.yaml.default and rename it to just config.yaml. Because this is uh, the actual config file that the plot manager will read. We're going to double click to open it and we're going to edit. So first and foremost, we need to put in our char location. So obviously for uh, Ubuntu and Linux, the, the way you describe your user path is very different from Windows. So by Windows, you have C, semicolon, uh, backslash. But for Linux, you can see how I'm highlighting the different modes. So in our case for Ubuntu, actually the Linux 2 example was very close to uh, where our child was installed to. The child blockchain was installed to, so which is home. Then under your username, the folder is char blockchain, navigate to bin. Sorry, uh, let me just backtrack a little bit. I believe it before bin, before bin you need to navigate to, okay, let's, let's go ahead again. So it's under my home folder. So you can see me navigate here. So I click on home, char blockchain. Then we navigate to VenV folder, which is on the top right here. Yeah, VenV folder, and then navigate to the bin folder. And you can see char is located there. So if you just select the file and you right click, go to properties, you see that the parent folder actually highlights the folder path. But uh, I actually made a mistake in this recording that I did not include the dot char, uh, no, the, the slash char. So I just included the parent folder and I did not include the char at the end of the path, which actually resulted in an error later. So you can highlight the parent folder. You can highlight the parent folder path. Uh, yeah, so I'm just, the similarities are there, but obviously the username, the root username is different. So you have to highlight this parent folder, control C to copy it. And take note, you need to have a space between the semicolon and the first slash. So it'll be home, fit 26 child blockchain, 
uh, char dash blockchain bracket van v bracket uh, sorry slash van v slash bin take note that you need another slash chia so you can see that in this recording i actually forgot about it which later you'll see me come into some uh, issues when trying to run it okay so now we need a folder path then i was looking for where i want to put the the folder for the log files so in this case i decided to put it so you can put it anywhere you want i decided to put it under the char blockchain folder i created a new folder and i just named it okay in my case i just named it plotter logs so yep then navigate inside so i copy the parent folder path and i paste it in so i need to include the name of the actual folder as well but uh, i was afraid i was afraid that the spaces would would affect so i think i renamed my plotter logs to have a hyphen in the middle so that there isn't any space but i believe it it is perfectly fine even if you have plotter space logs should be perfectly fine I type it in so that's the full name of my folder path for my log files okay so this are uh, how the log files are recorded in uh nope so okay let me go back a little bit so this duration here go a little bit more okay in this view window right this check interval 60 seconds it is actually for your view window on the plot manager so 60 seconds means it only refreshes the view every 60 seconds but personally i like to have a more updated view so i believe here i changed it from 60 to 20 seconds so that my view will refresh every 20 seconds instead yeah i changed it 20 notifications i just left it because they are all false by default so i didn't need the notifications instrumentation is uh, something that i don't need as well so i skip past it then let's go to the global settings so max concurrent is the number of plots that can be running on this particular uh, instance of plot manager so in my case my this for my current linux for my current ubuntu plotting machine i have about uh, two terabyte of MVMB temporary space. So my max concurrent, I believe I set to six. Yeah, I set it to six because I just want, wanted a maximum of three per one terabyte because I have two, two sticks of one terabyte MVMB. So I just wanted, wanted maximum of three concurrent jobs, three concurrent plots running on one terabyte. So I set a max concurrent of six. Max for phase one, I set it as two because I wanted each. So those are the maximum number of phase one instances for this, uh, for the plot, for this run of plot manager. So in this case, I wanted to have one phase, one, con one concurrent phase one job for each, uh, for one concurrent phase one plot for each stick of one terabyte. So this is why since I have two sticks of one terabyte, I left my max for phase one, the global setting to just two. Okay, then we scroll down further. Okay, so this is where we set the details of our jobs. Okay, and first and foremost, I actually need to set my, what you call it? Uh, okay, we need to copy the path of our temporary folder. So take note that in this video here, I actually have a mistake because uh, so to explain it a bit, the my current two one terabyte SSDs right were actually formatted in I believe NTFS format because before before installing Ubuntu on this system, this this system was running Windows ten. So when I formatted my two temp drives, it was in NTFS, which is actually incompatible with Ubuntu. So I didn't realize it at the time of recording this video. I'm probably gonna insert another part about how to uh format format the uh 
uh, format the drives in Ubuntu as well into the EXT, I believe should be the EXT3 or EXT4 file format. We're going to go through how to format your SSD drives in Ubuntu. So, so previously, uh, I mentioned in my other part that uh, actually when I was shifting over from my Windows OS to the Ubuntu uh, to the Ubuntu system, Ubuntu installation, Ubuntu operating system per se, my temp drives were actually pre-formatted on the Windows 10 using the NTFS file format. Hence, that resulted in me not being able to use the temp drives uh, when I run the plot manager. So I have to reformat the temp drives into the, e I believe should be the EXT3 or EXT4 format. And I'm going to show you how to do it here. So you can see that uh, I'm not able to access the drive because let me see whether there's a log file. Okay, yeah. So this is one of the log files from when I previously tried to run it on the my NTFS SSDs. And you can see that there's this error. It says like create plots, plotter, create plot this, runtime error, STD exception. So it doesn't very clearly state what is the error. You have to scroll up. So above when, after this line of using four threads of stripe uh, size, whatever, it says caught plotting error, file system error, cannot remove read only file system. And it indicates the, so this path is the path of my SSD. So it couldn't read the file system because it is NTFS, which is incompatible with Linux. So by the way, Ubuntu is a Linux software. So that's for my U drive. So the same similar error for my D drive as well. So if we scroll down to the bottom, it says, uh, now it has a slightly different error message. It says error 30, read only file system and it indicates to the path of my, uh, indicates the path of my SSD. So slightly different errors, but uh, both of them hint to the same thing that the error is due to a read-only file system on my SSD. So to solve this, we have to reformat the SSDs. So on your uh, taskbar on your Ubuntu desktop on the extreme left, if you have SSDs, there should be a prompt pop up here that says SSD. So if you click on it, you will get instant access to your SSDs here. So pretty convenient. So if you click on other locations, especially on the left-hand side of this uh, folder, this like with something a bit like a folder explorer, you can see my two temp drives here and my main drive, which is my OS drive. Okay, hey, so in order to format in Ubuntu, uh, you need to type, click on this, like this nine dots icon here on the bottom left of your taskbar. So basically, it will launch like a program search feature where you can search through all your available programs on your Ubuntu desktop. And you need to type in this D I S K S this. So this, uh, this program is actually like your Windows partition manager or your storage manager in Windows, similar to that. So something like that. So basically this is software that you can use. Uh, it's an inbuilt software on Ubuntu desktop. So this is a software that you can use to format your drives. Okay. So you can see here that I've already formatted it to the EXT4 file system, which is compatible, which is, uh, compatible with Linux and I'm going to show you how to format here. So if you select the particular SSD on the top left, uh, you need to select the partition where most of your storage is. So you can see that there's some other partitions whereby it seems like it's been set aside for recovery. So just leave those as it is. Just select your main storage partition. Okay, go to this gear icon right below the partition here. So you click on it. Okay. So this gear icon is actually for additional partition options. 
Once you click on it, the first command will be format partition. So you click on that. It will ask you to put in your volume name. And you can choose the type of file system that you want to format it to. So if you're using you know, if you're using your SSD and you're plotting on Linux only, so you gotta specify the ext for file system. For if you are formatting this and transferring to transferring it to a Windows OS, you gotta format it to NTFS. If you're gonna be using it for both systems, that means you're gonna be sharing the SSD between both Windows as well as Linux OS. Uh, you gotta format it to the FAT file system which is, uh, I believe, should be FAT32. Either that or XFAT, but uh, XFAT is not very efficient for temp drive plotting. Uh, I do have a video on it. So I prefer to format this the EXT4 file system. So I'm not going to go through with this because my temp drives are already formatted. So I'm just showing you the available options. So basically, if you want to proceed the format, just key in your volume name just click next follow the instructions and you will have a formatted ssd you can obviously you can do the same thing for your hard disk as well but take note that if you're formatting your destination drives uh for so i'm going to pause the video here if you're take if you're formatting for your destination drives you got to take note that your is your harvester machine running purely on linux if your harvester machine is running only on linux and not on windows obviously you can use the ext for file system but if your harvester machine is on windows and you're plotting on linux because most people are saying that linux plots 10 percent faster so in this case your in this case your destination directory you might want to leave it on the x fat file system which is the ex fat file system so that both your linux software linux os as well as your windows os can read from it Okay, so I think here in this part of my recording, I'm just trying to show the parent folder, the file name. So that means once you have formatted it, if you, yeah, this is the parent folder part. If you click on any one of the 10 files inside that folder, uh, click on properties. If I right click on any of the files, say select properties. Under the parent folder, you will get the actual uh, temporary folder path that you want to copy and paste into the config dot yml for your swap child plot manager which i'm opening up and i'm showing it here yep so this temp2 temporary directory path is the exact same path that we went through earlier yep so i just click on one of the files right click properties now paste it in and then include the ssd b plots because that's my folder name okay so that's how to format your temp drives in ubuntu so i copied from the parent folder then put it in the temporary directory. Then obviously you need to put the name of the actual folder. So my name is U Drive Temp Plots. That's the name of that particular folder that I'm storing my temporary plots in. Okay. So I'm going to change the name of my job as well. And you can see here that I haven't inserted my farmer and pool public key, but I'm going to go to my des get my destination directory first, which is here. Okay, so for destination directory, uh, let me just reverse that video a little bit. So for destination directory, uh, since there are, I already have some pre existing perm plots inside, you can select any one of the perm plot files, right click and then select properties. If you go to the parent folder, it will show the full path of this particular folder, which is a little bit more convenient. So I just copy the full parent folder path and I paste it into the destination directory path. Uh, so I actually copied wrongly. 
probably didn't press Ctrl C, so I realize it here. I highlight again, press Ctrl C, and I'm gonna paste it in again. Yep, so now it's correct. And you can see that I'm missing the farmer and pull public key, which I am going to get a copy of soon. So let me see whether I have it. Yeah, I have previously downloaded it. Okay. So I previously pre-recorded my farmer and pool public keys. Uh, I have one set for H pool below and one set for the normal pool and public keys. Both are the same, just that H pool will add a zero X in front of your keys. So in this case, in this instance for the plot manager, you do not want zero X. So I'm not going to use the H pool keys. I'm just going to copy. Yeah. The, this farmer public key. So, I, so you get this keys from your original full note when uh, there, there are ways you can get it. So you can Google, you can search YouTube for it. It's very simple ways that you can get the keys to show. And I've uh, copied it into uh, my text file and put a space. So I'm going to copy my farmer and pull public key. Take note that uh, you need to have a space after the semicolon and before you paste in the keys, save it. Okay, so size K32, bit field, I'm going to leave it as true. Thread count, I believe I'm going to change it. Uh, I believe I'm changing it to 4 because I just want to use 4 threads per job. I'm running on a 6 core 12 thread processor. I, yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to run 2 jobs on this system. So I'm going to use 4 threads per job. So bucket size, leave it. Memory buffer, I left it at 4,000, which is uh, the default for the plot manager. But I think the default for the charge UI should be 3390 if I'm not wrong. So you can just edit it to 3390 if you are. Uh, it should be perfectly fine. So max concurrent plots for this particular job, I, le I leave it as 3 because uh, this, is a, this is a single one terabyte drive for this I'm going to run a single one terabyte drive for this particular job under my U drive. So I just want a maximum of three jobs running concurrently on that drive. Technically, you can try up to four, but in this case, I just wanted to stick with three first. So I didn't want to overload the drive. Uh, the stagger minutes are a setting whereby you want to decide how many minutes will go before starting the next count. The minimum number of minutes to wait before starting the next job. So I think I left change it to 90. So I changed it to 90, which is one and a half hours, which means that if I started my job right now, uh, the plot manager will have to wait at least 90 minutes before starting the next job. That's provided if the other uh, conditions for starting the job uh, coincide. That means uh, the other conditions for starting the next job are fulfilled as well. So I'm going to set max for phase one to one. Concurrent start early phase, I'm going to leave it as four. It's best to just leave this as four. Start early phase delay, leave it as zero. Uh, temporary destination sync, I'm going to set it to true. So what this does is, uh, in my experience, is that when you set the temporary to destination sync to true, what it does is that I believe for phase three and four, the files get written earlier to the destination drive. And uh, in my case, I find it a little bit faster because uh, it kind of like the the, cop the the files get written in the earlier phase compared to a later phase. So what happens if you set temporary to destination as false is that the, the plot, the whole temp plot will finish plotting in your temp drive from phase one to phase four. And after phase four is complete and it has been renamed in your temp drive, uh, the plot, the char executable will then copy that entire file at, over to your destination drive. Uh, this setting is fine for most people, but what I found that in my experience, it seems to be a little bit faster if I set this setting temporary to destination sync to true. So what happens is that in phase three and four, rather than just completing the plot in that time drive, I believe a copy of the plot gets copied over to the destination drive first. And once the plotting completes in the time drive, 
it just goes over to the destination drive and just renames the file instead of transferring over. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on the dynamics on how this works. Uh, you might probably have to check the char key base or you have to uh, maybe ask the SWA, the more, the more uh, established users of this plot manager. But uh, it's just a personal preference. I said this is true, but it's perfectly fine for you if you leave VS false as well. So you can just play around with the settings, see which one is faster for you. Okay, so when it comes to this settings here, whereby Unix process priority and Windows process priority, uh, just leave it the figures that it is. So what this does is that basically uh, Unix process priority of 10 means that the plots will run at a normal job priority. If you change the values, you can change to a higher or lower job priority. The same for Windows process priority as well. 32 is the normal process priority for Windows. So if you tweak the value, you will actually change the figures. As to what figures to change to, you can refer to the readme, uh, the readme.md on the plot manager for a guide on what figures you want to change. So if you want to set the plot manager, job, plot manager jobs to a higher process priority, for example. So CPU affinity, I leave it as false. Uh, basically CPU affinity, if you set it to true, it will so like dedicate some CPU cores to your harvester if you are using the same machine for plotting and harvesting. So I believe uh, Swa in his readme says that if you set this enable CPU affinity to true, by setting aside I believe one to two threads for your harvester, it improves the efficiency of your harvester and the speed of your harvester. And the final one is the CPU affinity. You see here in the brackets, zero to five. So zero to five is the your thread count. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it means that the first six threads of my CPU are dedicated for this particular job. So since I'm only setting four threads, I'm going to re remove four and five from this setting. So I think now you need to remove that final, uh, com uh, final comma, comma as well. So after the three, you should, so I'm using backspace, make sure you remove that uh, comma after that the last digit here before it's closed off by this square brackets. All right, so I've completed this and I'm gonna make a whole copy of this job. Okay, so you see in this uh, default directory, right? So you see here this job inland, it has temporary directory, it has two temporary directory and two temporary two directories, which are separated by a space and a dash. So this is an instance where you can set multiple temp directories and multiple temp2 directories and multiple destination directories. So how it works is that if your first temporary directory is full, you move on to the second temp directory. Same thing for the temp2. If the first one is full, it moves on to the next. Same thing for the destination directory. If in this case, J drive is full, then it moves on to your K drive. Okay. And uh, um, so yeah, so I'm just highlighting to illustrate. You can set multiple destination and temporary directories, as I explained earlier. Okay, so here you see me copying the first job, and I'm gonna replace the second job with that copy, and I'm gonna rename the job names. So this makes it easier because I don't have to redo all the farmer and pull public keys as well as the settings. And I'm going to change the name of the job as well as the change, change the, the path of the destination directory. So I'm selecting my second SSD drive. So let's go back a bit. So in order to access your SSD drives, you can go to uh, your home folder and you can go to other locations at the bottom. So this Seagate backup drive is my destination directory and I'll click on other locations, you will see that these are my two NVMe drives, one terabyte each. So somehow that drive was, uh, it was labeled a Chinese name in my Windows, in my Windows uh, operating system. I, I don't know how it did it, but somehow it just happened that way. So I'm going to select the 10 folder, right click on properties. So I misclicked, right click on properties and go to parent folder. I'm going to copy that plus the D10 plots in order to get my uh, temporary directory path. So I'm going to change my job name to D drive. OK, 
paste it in temporary directory path and I'm gonna add the d10 plots as that is the name of that particular folder so take note that this is still a mistake because I haven't uh, formatted these two SSDs into the ext4 file format so when I'm gonna run it later I'm gonna run into certain issues Okay, so destination directory is the same. So most of the settings are the same, but the CPU affinity, we are going to change it because the first job we are using 0, 1, 2, 3. That means the first four threads. And the second job, I'm going to allocate the next four threads, which is 4, 5, 6, and 7. So I'm changing it manually, 4, 5, 6, and 7. A certain new setting here in this version of Plot Manager, if you can see this uh, instruction, skip full destination set to true. So skip full destinations, what it does is that if you have multiple destination directories, right? Once the first destination directory is full, it will move on to the next one. So in the previous version of Plot Manager, there wasn't this setting. So I believe some users have an issue whereby even though their first destination drive was full, the temporary plots couldn't move to the next one. So uh, it's preferred that you set this destination, this skip full destination uh, command to true so that it will not, uh, so wherever it detects a full destination drive, then it will not copy the plots to it. Instead, it will wait for you to, in to insert another destination drive that has empty spots before it copies over the plots either. I'm not 100% sure how it actually works, but uh, best to leave that command as true. Okay, I'm going to set some initial delay minutes to the second job. I think I said it, yeah, was it 20 or 10? So I said it 10 minutes. Okay, so I'm thinking in this stage we have configured our uh, a config.yml and we're going to go through how to run. So I believe in this video I ran into certain issues because uh, if you remember I mentioned earlier my char destination right was wrong because I didn't include slash char at the end of that path. So I'm going to run into some issues when I try to run this. And you're going to see this, the set of error messages that I encounter. So if you encounter the same error messages, it's a clue that you might be making the same mistake as I did, which means that your probably your char destination path is incorrect or it's not. that means you skipped out the slash char at the end of your char destination path in the config.yml. All right, so I'm going to go to my plot manager folder, right click on the empty space and open in terminal so that I don't need to use the change directory command. Yeah, but it's already open this window. So I think I close that window and I just copy and paste python manager.py start. And you can see I encountered this whole list of error messages. So this is the disadvantage of the Swachar plot manager. Uh, one big Disadvantage of using this is that during installation and during running, right, a lot of the error messages do not make sense. Like the when you run into an error, right, sometimes the error messages will hint towards what you need to change. But in this case, I, I've if you can see me in this pre-recorded video, you can see me looking through. Uh, like I was pretty confused. I was like block sequence start in that particular line. One line one seven seven of the config file and so on, so I believe I navigated to the config file. The right, so you can see me navigating to the config file, going through the. I'm trying to look for line one seven seven, 
So you can see the, so let me do a pause. Okay, let's say don't need to pause. So you can see that here on the bottom right hand corner of this text file, you can see the line 177 and the column number. So I was trying, so in this pre-recorded video, I didn't understand where I went wrong. So I was trying to find it, find the exact uh, part where maybe I had left out certain syntax errors and stuff like that. So the rest of the video was the same because no matter what I did, like I changed everything here, I couldn't figure out the error. So I'm going to forward to another clip whereby I actually solve the error and we'll move on from there. Okay, and this is part two of uh continuation of how to install the chair plot manager. You can see in this part that I managed to get it to work and how I actually got it to work was in this part. If you look at the char underscore location, home fit26, that's my root name. So it's, so this fit26 will be different for your own computer. Char blockchain, van v bin. So previously I had missed out the chia, the chia at the end of that, after the end of that slash. So once I have that, you can see that my plot manager should work. Uh, but you shouldn't be running it on sudo. So in order to run this program, you shouldn't use sudo to run the Python tree manager.py start. So make sure that when you're running it, you do not run as root. So Python manager p dot py view and we are in. Okay, so they see that the, the plot manager is running. And that's it. I think that's it. So you can see that plot manager is running. It's running fine now. And the solution for that. So why I encountered that error was because I didn't complete the uh, char location properly in my config.yml. So here, you're going to see me removing that chair, saving the file, and trying to run it again. So something that I've noticed that is quite interesting for this plot manager is that once you've gotten the chair location path correct on the first time in your config.yml, it seems that even though I've, I have edit that, that location path later by skipping out the chair.exe in Windows 10 and skipping out the chair name on Ubuntu, my plot manager is still able to access the exe file. Uh, pretty weird. That means as long as you get it right the first time, you shouldn't encounter any errors for future executions of the plot manager. But uh, the, the problem always comes when you're running it for the first time because you have to get everything perfect on the first run. So you can see here that even though I removed that chia from the end of the path, because I actually managed to run it once, so on the second run, even though the path name is incorrect, the manager still, still runs, which is pretty interesting. So yeah, the, the, this manager isn't perfect. And uh, yeah, the, the annoying part about this manager is that it doesn't really prompt the correct error messages whenever you have an error. And it's pretty difficult to debug because since they don't show you the correct messages, you don't really know which part uh, where's, which part is going wrong and you, you don't really know how to fix it. Okay. So that's how to install the Swachar plot manager.